paper six for 2003. That's uh, part one. Now, as I said before, I do hope you tried the paper first. There is no doubt you will get a lot more from it if you work through the paper first. Anyway, I'm going to start working through it now. Some questions, all the information is on here. And other questions, maybe not quite all of it. So we'll need to check now and again with the actual question paper to see if I've got all the details on the paper. Right. Question number one. Got a pencil case in the shape of a cylinder. Length of this pencil case is 14 centimetres. Radius is 5 centimetres. Calculate the volume. Right, now this in fact is a prism. Any solid where the end is the same shape all the way through is called a prism. And the volume of any prism, no matter what the shape of the end is, as long as it has the same as they say cross section all the way through, the volume of any prism is the area of the end multiplied by the length of the prism. So because this is actually a circular ended prism, then the area of the end is actually the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. You're expected to know that. The area of a circle is pi r squared. And if you multiply that by the length, we'll have the volume of the prism. So pi multiplied by r squared, it is the radius. Now be careful with the questions if they give the diameter. You need to make sure you're working with the radius for this. So pi r squared multiplied by the length, which is 14. So it's a calculator paper, and this is when we pick up the calculator. Where's the pi button on yours? OK, so we've got pi, so on my calculator I have to press that button, then that button to get the pi. Multiplied by 5, I've got a squared button. Some calculators don't have multiply by 14. Write down the full calculator answer and then write down something sensible. Oh dear, I put the dot in the wrong place. From the angle I'm looking it's not easy to see where the dot is. So always write down the calculator answer and write down a sensible answer and we're told what to do for this. Let's tell us the sensible answer is two decimal places. One 099.55 is two decimal places, but that seven will round out to five six. Now, if I wasn't told to do it two decimal places, my sensible answer would have been, would have been one thousand one hundred. Show you working out, calculator answer, sensible answer, and the sensible answer they tell you to do if they actually tell you what they think is sensible. And the units, of course. Let's not forget the units. Okay, that's part one, part A. Part B, show the pencil of length 17 centimetres can fit inside the pencil case. Now, if you were to put a pencil in this pencil case, you could put it in here, along the length. Or, in fact, you could squeeze it in from that top point down to that bottom point there. And that is, in fact, the longest pencil you can fit in this pencil case. So if you look at this right-angled triangle, then the length of the hypotenuse of this right-angled triangle will, in fact, be the largest pencil we can fit in the case. So I t interpret this question as being a Pythagoras question. OK, let's see what we know about the triangle. The length of the pencil case was 14, so that's 14. Now, this is where I have to be careful, radius diameter, which do I need? I actually need to know this diameter, so that's 10. So, the length of the pencil, let's call it P, shall we? P equals Pythagoras. Square the 14, square the 10, 
I'm finding the hypotenuse, which is the longest side, so I need things to get bigger. So I add. And then lastly, I need to square root. Now you can take two or three lines over writing that, but that is in fact good enough for showing all of you working out. Okay, calculator. We've got 14 squared plus 10 squared equals. Now if you use the calculator and you can work, show out some working out as you go along, rather than just the final answer, it's always a good idea to show working out as you go along. Now I've got to find the square root of that, so in this case I type in square root answer button equals. Now we certainly need the whole calculator answer here. And our sensible answer in this particular case is going to be, will the pencil fit in? Well as we've worked out the diagonal is 17 and a little bit, we can fix that pencil in. So we need to show working out and we need to write an answer, not just yes. Yes, it will fit as 17 centimeters is less than I'm just going to put an arrow like that actually and the examiner wouldn't mind something like that at all but just to write yes would get you no marks at all you need, you need to explain all your thinking when you're working out so let's see what the marks actually are well there's two marks here, one mark for appreciating how to work out the volume of the pencil case and one mark for the answer. No marks for the units but somewhere in the exam there will be marks for the units so make sure you mention them every time. He says when well, he didn't do it himself but nobody spotted that did they? Not now it's there. Okay part B, what marks have I got for that? Well there's three marks there one mark for appreciating the triangle and the Pythagoras, one mark for using the Pythagoras, and one mark for the statement and making it clear your answer. If on that one you just said yes it will fit without any showing any working out, you would actually get naught. So this is a very good example of the importance of showing working out. The right answer does not necessarily get you any marks, and yes is the right answer. On its own, worth naught. OK, moving on, question two. We need to write 72 as a product of its prime factors. 72 as a product of primes. Product means multiply, prime means prime uh, numbers. And our prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and so on. So there's our prime numbers. So we need to write 72 as those, some of those multiply together. And to do that, we do a factor tree, a prime factor tree. Called a tree because of these so-called branches. That's an even number, so 2 goes into 72, and it's actually two 36s. That's an even number. So 2 goes into it, and it's actually 2 18s are 36. Still an even number, 2 9s, and you keep splitting up the number with its branches until you end up with all prime numbers. Then you can say 72 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And that is a product of primes. You can write it also in the short version with the little numbers, called indices or powers. Right, let's go for 270 as a product of primes. 2 is an even number. 2 multiplied by 135. Well, that's not an even number, but as it ends in 5, 5 must go into it. This is a calculated paper, so of course you can use a calculator to help you. Um, but it's good practice because this could be on the non-calculator paper. Uh, I've now got 27. Hopefully you recognise that that's three nines, which is then three threes. So it, the end of my branches, two, 
five, three, three, three are all prime numbers. So I can say 270 equals two times, I might as well do the threes and then end with the five. Doesn't matter how they appear on the branch, in order or not. Um, lastly, we might as well write it in index form as it's called. OK, so that's writing those two numbers as product of primes. Now the marking, quite simply, is one for the diagram of how you did it, one for how you did it, and one for the answer. Don't mind which one. One for the working out, one for the factor tree, and one for the answer. Doesn't matter which one it is. Okay.